What's up YouTube? Bobbles and Ball Cards back with another video. Hope everybody's had a good week out there flowing into your Friday evening and your weekend. Uh, preparing for Turkey Day, Black Friday, all of that good stuff. So hope everybody is doing well out there. Um, I know that, you know, it's bad news out there for, for the hobby, for sports cards, you know. I was listening to Andy earlier, his podcast thing he does each week, and uh, shout out to him uh, if you don't go uh, follow him or listen to him, but she blinded me with refractors, shout out to Andy, and he talked about like some of the videos out there and clickbait and the thumbnails and all that, and you know, some of mine are kind of just humorous, <laughs> they could be taken as clickbait, but this particular video i'm gonna go ahead and lead in you've already seen the thumbnail if you clicked on it it's gonna be clickbait as hell and i'm gonna tell you why so as i have here on the screen it is uh the nt luca logo man patch auto 101 bgs9 that sold last night for three million one hundred twenty thousand dollars with buyer's premium now that's a hell of a lot of money and I don't know that in this hobby, there is a very large audience that has $3 million just expendable to purchase one single card. I think it's probably a very small crowd. But this draws attention because... If you're not familiar with this card, it was transacted at the absolute worst time in the hobby to purchase cards, February of 2021. You can see the date here on this invoice, 22721. The check was dated for 22821. The total amount of the tran transaction was $4 million. The Luca was valued at 4.6. There's some people in here saying, how do we even know he paid that much for it? Because this is $4 million. There's some adjustments. We can't see everything. There's other cards here. If I had to guess based on uh, seeing some cards that both guys post in this, some of these cards were likely put towards maybe a trade and cash situation. Like, if I just had to guess here... There was cards moving on both sides and cash or, you know, what have you. And so that's why this adjustments is here. Probably over here talks about some trades or, you know, something. Something went on uh, to, to make it an even $4 million. So, $4 million, but the card sold for $4.6. Um, and then, obviously, he resold it at $3.12. So people are looking at this as like, Oh, it dropped 32%. Holy hell. The hobby sucks. It's doomed and gloomed. And, uh, you know, nearly a $1.5 million loss. Nobody's looking at it the fact of if this was a $100 card, it would have lost $32. Um, if it was a $33 card, it would have lost, you know, about $11. Nobody's looking at the normal cards. No. Which, truthfully, they have corrected even further on some of them than 2019, than three years ago. If you go look at some prices, and I'll share that with you in a moment, but if you go look at some of those prices, the regular cards have corrected even further. Does that mean that everything's doom and gloom? Hell no. It means that it's back to where it started, but with some more available out there, which then in turns causes for the, de the decreased value. This whole hobby, the value of the cards are, are always going to be based on a supply and demand you know, basis. And then you toss in many other factors regarding player performance or injuries or you know, career paths, what have you. And, and it takes 
many different elements to create the value in the card, but the key one is demand. This is a one of one. Only one person can have this unless some fractional company buys it and then splits it into shares, but there's only one of these. There's only one made. So when you look at the demand, well, if people have the millions to spend, then they're going to buy it. The issue was in February, the valuation on this card, because everything was up, was likely at, an, at a higher value. Now things have settled and came back to earth. It wasn't sustainable. I bet many cards you put out there, if they were purchased around February of 2021, look at the Jordan. That thing, I don't know what the one last night, there was a PSA 10 last night when I seen it in extended bidding, was sitting at 180000 You know, the, Nick, the guy that sold this, the, the, the guy who bought it off of Shine, he's the one who sold it. I want to share a couple things here. First, this. He made a post saying that he's going to be putting some cards up for sale, that it's going to raise eyebrows. But he wanted to be clear that he's selling these cards, pretty much understanding that he's going to take losses, that people may question things. Um, but he, he was looking at his collection, and he, according to what he's saying, uh, he wanted to go deeper with his collection. It's strategic, and it's, it's exciting. So um, he said he has a dream of what his collection looks like in the next three years, and he's going to start working on making it happen. So us guys, you know, at the bottom, we could look at this and say, oh, damn, he lost a lot of money. And he did lose a lot of money. But to someone like him, he likely, <laughs> I don't want to say it's a wash in the bucket, but at the same time, this is a different level. Like, it, it's a different level, a different playing field. He's wanting to, you know, we sell cards all the time, I'm sure, that we take losses on. He's just on a bigger sandbox. Like, the cards he collects are way above the normal tier of what most people are collecting. So, it looks like a lot of, you know, different loss because the numbers are larger. It's no different than us selling a $50 card for $25. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is, right? It's just a different sandbox. But it raises, as he even says here... It's going to raise eyebrows. And he posted this six weeks ago, by the way. So, anyway, I wanted to share that with you. But to go over here, um, try to see where that post is. This one. Another thing that's always, like, been funny to me is when people talk about the PSA 10 Jordan, they say it peaked at like 760 or something like that. Maybe they're talking about this before the buyer's premium. But he paid eight hundred forty thousand for this PSA ten Jordan. Um, again, I seen one last night that was sitting at a hundred and eighty. So realistically, and he has several of these Jordans. Uh, he's potentially lost more money on PSA ten Michael Jordans than he has, you know, that Luca. If you want to like really look into it, if he still has all these Jordans. Right now, he's lost more money on those than he has that one Luca. So, there's different ways to look at it. You know, here's a picture of him recently, a week ago, courtside with Luca and a couple massive cards. I I'm sure he's not like losing sleep over selling that Luca Doncic. The issue is, you get stuff like this. And again, I'm not like trying to talk shit about Jeff Wilson, but this is. Like, I don't like to see this. What happens tonight could spike or crash the sports card market? Jeff, let me ask you why that is. Because I can tell you, every card in this picture, 99% of the people I know could never afford those cards to begin with. How is that causing a spike or a crash of the sports card market? These cards are not pertaining to the majority of the hobby. As such, yeah, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to look at the numbers. It's fun to have conversations about it, but it's not impacting the majority of our lives. This has nothing to do with, you know, a tops 
uh, you know, flagship rookie card of, of my of Juan Soto, right? These guys, these cards, this Bryce Harper Super Fractor, what the hell does that have to do with anything I own? Nothing. Like, I, I'm not buying it. That went for like $350,000 or something like that. Yeah, sure, my entire collection is not worth that. And I have some nice stuff. So, seeing stuff like this, this is just, to me, it's it, it it's misleading. To tell people that these cards could spike or crash the card market is absolute nonsense, man. So, let's look at some normal cards. Let's look at the people that are having fun in this hobby, that actually love collecting, that understands that 2020, 2021, and even majority of 2022, as things were settling back in, were inflated markets that should have never happened. They were inflated values that should have never happened. And instead of worrying about these uh, million dollar sales that most people aren't affording, let's look at where things are. Because truthfully, if you look here, so I'm using a PSA 9 silver, Luka Doncic. Right here, three years ago, this card was $443 of buyer's premium on PWCC. I want to share a sale just real quick to show I sold one in November. I do not know the exact date, but I do know it was in December or in November. Sorry. Um, I sold one for $699.99. Uh, there was no tax here. So it was uh, 700 plus shipping, calculated shipping. So I sold one for 700 in November of 2019, but that was on eBay. Um, the one here was PWCC, so it just shows the pricing difference, or maybe, you know, several days apart, I don't know, uh, but anyway, 443 with buyer's premium on the 19th, today is the 18th, so damn near three years apart. Here is February 26th, 2021, this sale was made, February 27th was when this invoice, so nearly, you know, the same uh, time frame here. And uh, this one did 1969 with buyer's premium. There was another one that was like 23 something with buyer's premium. I went with the lower one just for the sake of this video to show, you know, I didn't want to go like where it was at on its peak or show the highest mountain it climbed. Um, 1969, so say two grand, right? Um, there hasn't been a recent sale that I've seen on PWCC of a silver and a nine, but the current eBay pricing is roughly. Uh, let me do this is roughly about 600 bucks 580 to 600 dollars okay so this is taking a roller coaster you know based on ebay if you look at the sale i had for 700 and it's down to 600 now uh from november 2019 to november 2022 it's dropped a hundred dollars does that mean the markets crash does that mean sports cards suck no it doesn't it means that in 2019, when I sold that card, it was a peak time for Luca at that moment because he had started the season off red hot. He was having triple doubles every night. He was the hottest thing in the league at that point. He was be, There was early talks of MVP, all of that stuff. This was right before the pandemic hit. And then, you know, you take into the fact that there wasn't many graded. There wasn't many out there in the space being sold. And so the value was, you know, a little bit higher. If we rewound back now and dis, you know, disregarded the last couple years where the nonsense was taking place, this card would likely be at this value today still because of the fact of how many are out in the, you know, out in, available now. Now, the only difference is you would have to calculate how many got opened and ripped over the nonsense period. People chasing when it was 2000. What did the tens hit like 10 grand or something like that? So more obviously got opened up. Likelihood was if the nonsense hadn't happened, uh, less would have been ripped and open. But that, that's a calculated you know number that we can't actually 100% figure there. Um, so anyway... The, the moral to this all is, guys, does this affect what you're doing? Because quite honestly, most people I'm talking to right now that are collecting or love cards or in this hobby for the enjoyment aspect of it, they're actually having a really great time now. 
because for so long we were, you know, on our heels worrying about if something was going to, you know, skyrocket before we could, you know, get to buy it. And now things are coming back to where it's like, oh, well, that's where I wanted to buy it to begin with. And, and it's coming back. I think the biggest question mark right now is does things slide further because people aren't sure where the bottom's going to be. So that people might start being more timid waiting on purchasing because they, you know, maybe they've been bit by a couple cards they bought and it slid further down. Now, you know, I, I'm not sitting here to say that we're at the bottom. It could slide a bit further. Um, I'm not going to, you know, go into what's going to happen in the future. I've talked privately with some folks about some things I could see going on over the next uh, eight months, so to speak, within people, the, the crowd of the hobby, um, the interest in it. And, and what that does to values, is I'm unsure of. Ultra modern stuff likely would take more of a hit just because if the um you know if, if the capacity of the hobby gets smaller and the prints have went up to meet the demand of the panda period then obviously you're going to have excess cards out there and not enough people buying them i think we're already seeing some of that in some aspects um i think we're in a crazy parallel phase where they're just making any color that they can come up with and mixing stuff and you know everything else and nobody knows what to buy so sometimes you know it, it's best to just keep it simple um so i think i think you know the, another thing with the parallels is is people will look and be like even though this is a more common or more searched or more wanted card people would look at like a 299 and say oh well this one just did this so i want this out of 100 even the, or this uh, out of 400 even though it might be a more sought card you know even cheaper so so people need to adjust to the the demand on the card and not just the serial number um that happens a lot in baseball people get confused sometimes why a blue could sell for just as much as a green even though the serial numbers one's out of 150 one's out of 99 it's because the blues are always wanted more than the greens um, and depending on unless it's like the Mariners or something and a color match may slip in there but for the most part blues are wanted more than greens uh, it's also a fact that the greens are usually retail so there's many aspects that people need to look at more than just well this one's serial number to this so it's rare so it should be worth more that's not always the case it, it comes into the demand and uh, you know it the the moral the the true moral of this story is guys just have fun but this kind of nonsense this is bad this, this is terrible like what happened last night shouldn't have any any inkling of indication of whether the market is going to spike or crash so what's going to crash the market is if people decide they no longer want to collect cards What's going to spike the market is if more people join the hobby and there's a demand rise for certain cards. There's where your spike or crash will occur. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Or the economy if people get too much strain um, and they don't have the money to buy cards. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you have a wonderful Friday evening. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Till the next video, I'm out.